the sciences and the arts have often existed in separate domains. Science is an exact and methodical discipline, while arts is whimsical, emotional, and free-spirited. So what happens when these two seemingly disparate fields collide? Delving into the worlds of biology, chemistry, genetics, and technology, today's artists are not afraid to cross the boundaries when it comes to creating this new breed of art. They say a true artist is prepared to bleed for his art, and S. Chandrasekharan lives by that adage. As we enter an age where the distinction between man and machine has become blurred, this artist recognizes that the human body can no longer be viewed as just a thing of flesh and blood. For the past 20 years, this Singaporean artist has pushed himself to his limit in a graphic and physical exploration of what it is to be human. Chandra Sekaran began his career during an interesting time for the arts in Singapore. Although long influenced by classical Western styles, many local artists were beginning to look closer to home for inspiration. In 1988, with their minds firmly rooted in Eastern artistic style, Chandra Sekaran and two of his contemporaries launched a combined exhibition, installation, and performance art entitled Trimurti. We came out the first show called the Trimurti, and the Trimurti actually based on the cultural values or the cultural aesthetics in making art practice. And that's where the beginning of art practice starts. I can say in Trimurti, that's where we shift. The installation was shaped by their multicultural and multi-religious understanding of creation, preservation and destruction as embodied by the Hindu concept of Trimurti. The exhibition was to become a turning point in Chanda Sekaran's career as he found himself becoming more and more entrenched in the Hindu notion of the human body as a vessel of creation and of destruction. In Hindu icons, uh, based on these particular uh, elements, one is form, uh, kriti rupa, function, kriya rupa, is power, sakti rupa. All based, all of the iconic images in, Hindu, in Hinduism are based on these rupas. And also they are related to a mythology myth, and every myth has a story. You see, these are the elements which actually expand in my work either in drawing, a performance, or installation. In his exploration of the human form, Chandra Sekaran gradually changed the focus of his work, seeing him shifting his perspective from artist and observer to actually becoming part of the artwork himself. Slowly, when I started to see the body, it started to dissolve for me. And eventually, this is where my journey from a body, to, from journey from understanding the body in notion of painting, to sculpture, then eventually to bio-art. So body is a key element in my work. This line of thinking was to eventually bring him into the realms of a new art form called bio-art. This is a concept that crosses the traditional boundaries of art. It still remains a mystery to the uninitiated, but Chandra Sekaran just sees it as another way of exploring the usually conventional approach to art. To me, Simple analogy is that uh, two different work. One is a painting a perfect apple. Everybody knows when this is a perfect apple. Another person takes an apple and it cuts into a keep clear and distorts it. At the moment of distortion, art is creating a language. And that distortion takes another level of knowledge to understand. To me, I think I look for distortion and questioning. Even, even if it's an apple, I will distort it as many ways as I can. But the first big step in this direction began with his exploration of pain and its overwhelming effect 
on the human body. Uh, when I'm doing this performance, when the, this buffalo is dragging me and uh, I, I was dragging the temple, the whole process of negotiation between the architecture, my body and the buffalo, the animal, was felt by the audience themselves. Uh, this is what we look for performances in art, that to allow the audience, we make the audience to question the process, and we also want the audience to feel the process, not just aesthetically, but uh, mentally, emotionally. This most physically challenging chapter of Chandra Sekaran's career was epitomized by his bleeding performance art series. This piece of performance and installation art underwent several evolutionary stages, but its central theme was to establish how certain human activities, such as the act of standing, bleeding, and drinking, all come together to represent human consciousness and part of everyday reality. Chandra Sekaran worked closely with an Australian biologist to create the actual bleeding function. They used red wine to drive the circulatory system in the installation, the red color giving it the appearance of blood. A pump drives the wine into the cellulose material that covers the head of the figure. With bacteria already present in the wine, it only takes about two to three days for the culture to start visibly growing on this material. After several days, a thick, bruised-looking layer has grown, an artificial skin for an artificial head. During this performance, the audience is called to participate by drinking the wine that bleeds out of the tent. The final incarnation of Chandra Sekaran's bleeding series was the bleeding angel. With this installation, he was able to ultimately address his notion of the cyborg, forcing us to wonder whether evolution will eventually link living beings to machines. I'm pushing that the bleeding angel at the, at the point that we live, we decompose, at the, time, at the same time we survived. So bleeding angel is going to be the future iconic how cyborg are also be part of our life. So they become part of our everyday reality. And that was my idea of showing the notion of bleeding angel. But this work was not so much the artist voicing his fears of the future, but a warning instead of how easy it is for humans to become manipulated by their surroundings and the influence of science and technology. But this is not just a physical reaction in his work. Chandra Sekaran also comments on the mental transformation that human beings have undergone in response to their ever-changing landscape, manipulated again at the hands of machines. His artistic journey has led Chandra Sekaran to a fundamental realization that in the 21st century, the human form is no longer held prisoner to its physical shell. External and internal pressures are leading to such mutations that the human form may no longer be recognizable as it is today. Although machinery will allow us to augment our bodies and change our appearance, the essence of our humanity will remain, no matter our shape or form. This realization takes us all the way back to Chandra Sekaran's initial immersion into Hindu philosophy which emphasizes the same transient existence of the human form. Bioart is still relatively new to many in this part of the world, and Chandra Sekaran is literally one of only a handful of artists in the region who have embraced the concept. There are many locally who still question whether it is, in fact, a form of art at all. But the artist welcomes such objections as a further incentive to drive home his work and consequently his message. Dealing with the audience is always a complex matter. And it's always a problem to all the artists how to communicate because they want to make sure the audience get the right message. I think we're in the learning curve. I think things will change, but at this moment, if I look back in the 1980s, we have changed a lot in the dealing with art scene. I mean, things have kind of we have become more flexible and able to bring to different, able to bridge the audience at different level. It's an important challenge for all the artists.
to face the consequences, face the challenges, and push the language as they can.